और पूजा को भी जो भवानी है उसको महाकाली और कोल्हापुर में महालक्ष्मी जैसा वहीं से आगे तपस्वी नाम का एक पहाड़ उस पहाड़ पर शक्ति की अर्धमात्रा इस प्रकार सारे की शक्तियां इस महाराष्ट्र में पृथ्वी तक से लिखती हूँ और यही पे श्री चक्र भी विरासता है
किसी चीज का अनुमान नहीं करता हमने सहजों के पहले शिखर और उसके बाद उसके इस तरह से ये मंदिर पाया था पहले मराठी में है आधी कल समय पाए पहले शिखर बनाना है और उसके बाद उसकी नींद डाल इसी तरह से जब ब्रह्मानंद शिव जाए उसके बाद थोड़े से आकाश में बहुत कार्य आ सकता है सो आज हम लोग महालक्ष्मी की पूजा कर रहे हैं मराठी सागर सबको बहुत सब महालक्ष्मी के मंदिर में बैठ के जो गाते महालक्ष्मी के मंदिर में बैठ के जो दम एक
the best day of darkness there is. Let me know how I've talked to you. Man, I'm just in the meeting to move, absolutely in the meeting to move. Because when you are in the center, you don't think. We are in meditation. That is why Ranya Shri is very important. So when you are fed up with it, you can feel there is something missing and then you take to Maya Shri Jesus. But in India, because of so many sayings, we feel that we should short-circuit. Short or let us uh, develop our own uh, Adhyaya. Let us develop our knowledge of our and then take to science. So there is no more imbalance with this. Because without the foundation of our that knowledge of the spirit, you take to any kind of progress, you can talk about. That I all the Western entrepreneurs, enterprises and also projections of religion have got to exist. Because there has been no bias. It is important that we must have that bias in our ourselves. Now in India we have people who have this idea, at least that you have to rise higher than materialism and that you have to become one big divirat, part and parts of the whole, this they know. And that's what, by doing that, once they get to show you around, they grow very deeply, the depth. But then they have achieved with this faith that we have to be self-realized and that we have to feel the all power. This conviction itself gives them the depth. And so when they achieve realization, they just go down very deep. But most of the time, people who have never heard about Ganesha, who have never heard about Kolapu, who have never heard about Mahesh, are sometimes much, much better, much more deeper than the people who know all these things by heart. So, one can be done that those who know outward, those who know through their books or through some gurus who teach them something, are absolutely outside. They have nothing in them to tell us because, because they have had no experience of the Self, no experience of the Self. That's only possible when you are Kundalini rises and breaks your Brahman. That is the time the first experience comes to you of the all perfect. So all those people who have been only just praying to Mahalakshmi, have been going to her, doing a lot of penances, fasting, this, that, have no idea as to what Mahalakshmi wants. And they always complain to me, other people are things we have done that. People are very religious. They are doing all kinds of ritualism, what we call as karma karma. But with that, do not reach where you are. So one has to understand that whatever has been written and told about all these great things in India, people may know in words, but in experience they do not know. So Sajoga is very important to them, this experience, so that they can really verify whatever is said in the science of spirituality about getting the realization is absolutely true. Not only that, but it's very practical. And every person who gets realization can understand it very well. So we are here in a very holy place full of unholy people. But still, there are some very, very good people here also. And 
because of Mahalakshmi, they make it with all promises uh, because these all promises are offered to the goddess. You can feel there a kind of a substitute feeling for God, feeling for spirituality. But they do not have the experience that you have. So you are much higher than all of them. And those who have experience can feel more as they go to the temple. You can go to the temple to see this place also. But give yourself a big bandhan because I have seen it next to the deity. There are very fine frequencies. They are doing all kinds of commercial activities. They are selling flowers, they are selling singing. So you can be careful with the person you can go and see this. Now they say that this temple is made uh, because it is one who is the one that has come out of God. You can see yourself if there are vibrations. And moreover, you must know that this puja uh, of these deities are done by people who are not at all in any way religious, but are just commercial. Commercialism can never give you any satisfaction, can never give you at all any satisfaction. Apart from that, it can teach you something unknown, of dangerous shows. But if your faith is pure, without any need, without any demands, then you develop your death within yourself, which is very helpful after such. <coughs> it's a remarkable thing how the Sri Chakra is here and how they have made the complete calculation of Sri Chakra. I met a, a scientist in uh, Russia, in Moscow, who has done research, very much big research on, on this teacher. Now, so we have teacher on the right side, on the left hand side we have the left hand side. So all the things that we do, we thanks after realization. I work through on the right hand side Sri Chakra and the left hand side Kali Tanjana. Now, how it works is very complicated thing. But we don't have to worry about that. As soon as you put your hand on somebody, the Chakra knows how to work it out. It works by itself. As if it is a breaking mechanism within us, we should know what sort of vibrations we do that to a particular person, for a particular cause, for a particular purpose. If that person has certain effects also, these chakras know what, what is the emitted, how to work it. So, it is not that we have a uh, it could not be only these chakras are awake, but we also have these two chakras are within us because of Kudori. But if you have a shitty problem, then you can find that your hands are stiff and you cannot uh, feel the guidance, or you can say, the divine uh, intentions uh, of realization. Because when you start using your hands, you don't feel any vibrations. So how do you know what's happening? It's a very complicated thing, and for that complicated thing, uh, they, uh, these instruments are made already, are prepared already, they are quite equipped with all the knowledge that is necessary, like the feed, feedback, as you call it, or we can call it a complete program. Is there. So, as soon as you put your hand on a person, the program starts working it out. Because it is programming is done uh, by God or by 
my Jesus can never be known. There cannot be two different things as far as such a one is concerned. I have been thinking about writing about all these big, big guitars that are in India. So it will be our help to you as well as to others in India. But here the atmosphere is so bad, as if the thing of God, the talk of God is absolutely wrong. You cannot see. People are in illusion and they think that all these talks and brought us nothing. That it is no place at the best, it's more uh, effective, more uh, apparent that they can see how you have progressed in much of this. And we can't understand how we could progress with uh, Adharma very much in the area of physical development or mental development. So now we come to a point where we realize that it is very important for all the rest of people to have the foundation of Adhyayana. For that it is important to give us some of your conditions because this knowledge is coming definitely from India. I mean the Indians have all the knowledge of your medical science, this science, that science, that science. But God's science is in India. And for that what are you going to do? When the question of our science is concerned, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to work it out? That this is the science of God. And the God's science has to be understood uh, with full dedication and devotion. Because of the conditioning of the Western uh, influence the Western progress. Sometimes we just do not know how to grasp this knowledge within ourselves. Very difficult. But if you can understand that as for science, we have to accept it fully from the West. You have to accept the knowledge of your spirit from the East. East has the knowledge of the Spirit. For that, you have to be ready to receive it. But if you are still in your arrogance, if you are still in your own conditions, then you cannot. Like a boy who comes from a village, but never grown, grown about science, and he suddenly put him in a science college. He said, What is this nonsense? What's all this? All? I have never known this thing. Why should I use a test tube? Why should I go in the laboratory? All kinds of things he can start saying. And this condition is there. Then he ran away from school within one year or two years, maybe a year. And that is what I find is their condition. So we must watch our conditions. What sort of conditions are? While the Indians have conditions of so called religious beliefs and institutionalism and this. They are very much conditions also. But it's easy to overcome that when you realize that whatever you are worshiping, for example in India, everybody has a Kuladeva. Means the family goddess. Everybody. Has. They must worship that goddess, particular goddess, everybody has. So they have to uh, if they just ask Mother Ali that what is, so that is just not good. So the condition is gets very easily, uh, easily validated. But the mental acceptance of 
something. It's very difficult. And I see also when they get married or marriage is arranged, they go mental. They go mental. If you go mentally, then you cannot understand anything. But if you are spiritual, then you can understand. For example, you see Mother Earth giving us these flowers. How can we go mental about it? It's a living process. For any living process we cannot get mental. So now you know it's all right. This is because of seed has got this and the seed is planted. But how? Why? That you can't answer. They never answer. Then you keep quiet. But say, uh, if there's a seed, you say, all right, this is Mother Earth. She wants to give to her children these flowers, fruits, these trees. So she's working it out. So one has to jump from one conditioning of materialism. Now you should see in matter, my energy never moves. Energy is disturbed. It never moves. Uh, and also energy which are moving, so called, uh, like electricity, this, that, are absolutely blank. Supposing there is electricity here flowing, all right, well and good. But supposing somebody stops it, it stops. It has no mind. It is a mindless thing. So in materialism, you become mindless. You start seeing also that in yourself, that you have become mindless. And becoming absolutely, uh, absolutely, I should say, like the body, which is mindless, which is fixed, fixed for it. And I see very much clearly in the West, I see that people have a very fixed life. It's difficult for them to get out of it because they don't have that movement towards the spiritual subtlety where one can. Uh, use the mind to do something. We would say that Mother Earth has got the mind. No, that nobody can be in the West. It's a person. That the Mother Earth produces these big rahas. She produces these stages. Nobody will be. How can we believe such a thing? That this Mother Earth thinks, that this Mother Earth produces these things. But logically you can say, logically, but say a tree has a certain height, the fruits have a certain shape, certain colors, flowers, say. Who changes all the seasons? Especially in India, it's very clear for six seasons. It's called as the Tamara Pratya in the Hatiro. Now, that is the one which is the lady which thinks. She has a mind of her own, she decides. And she, she works out. This concept was doubly denied in the West. It's first is that they cannot accept a goddess. Woman has no part. Right from Socrates onward, nobody has talked much about a woman. Except, of course, there is a thing and all that, but it's very minor rules there. Greeks had goddesses who were just like human beings, so that also gets ruled out. And very little was accepted. And when Christianity came, some of the Christians saw them, that there should be no mention of the mother in any. But despite that, people worship the mother. They worship the mother of Christ as Though in the Bible she she stopped as a woman. In a very deliberately style. She's addressed. So the conditioning of people is about the power of God to hang somewhere in the air. That is there and that he gives us everything. But what is the communication? What is the justification or what is the logical thing? How to explain? 
So you have to say this is a mystery. God is a mystery, he has something there, he doesn't. And how can people believe it? So the Christian tradition is, I think, even worse than, I think, Jew tradition. Because they, they just took it out Christ further away. So the painters, artists couldn't do that. They couldn't accept their act and mother things. But despite all that, the motherhood has not been respected that should have been in the Bible. Which is a very wrong thing. Why Mahalakshmi herself incarnated as mother of Herself. And to say about Mahalakshmi as a woman, I think it is a big thing. And where the women are inserted like this, where the goddesses are inserted, you cannot expect any spiritual hope unless and until you accept that it's the Shakti, the mother, who is the only thing that the communication between us and the divinity. So this condition, Christian condition, has to go up as far as the mother for this person. It's very surprising sometimes when I see how these people are trying to bring down the level of a goddess to just a woman. So this is a very big blessing in India that they respect mother and special. And that the whole thing is done by the movement of the Shakti by the thinking of the Shakti, by the coordination and the understanding and the planning of the Shakti also. It's not done by God all the time. He's just a spectator. She does it. Once that concept can fit into your head proper, then you will see so many conditions we drop. Because religion was organized, and in an organized religion, you can put whatever you like the way you want to put it. And it was such a big mistake by that people developed a lot of ego, a lot of uh, things against women. And also, the first thing they call the original sin and all that is because of the woman, they really keep treated women and they have no respect for them. So the women have changed their role and instead of becoming mothers and goddesses, they have tried to become something like actresses. But you can understand that without the power, there is no sense in anything. And this is the power of love. And this is the power of truth. Once you get that power, you should humble down and know that this power is within us, which has given us all this knowledge, which has given us all this uh, ability to raise the good of it. All this is because of energy within us, shakti within us. Without that, we are nothing. And that is the mother who has died. I do not know how much to press this point, but it's important. Because I find, especially uh, in, uh, in England, some newspaper people think, how do you feel as a guru, as a woman? I mean, it's kind of a thing, a woman, and uh, as if I am sort of a, uh, that movement where women are starting the fight with the men sort of thing and now this is another woman with a woman so she should be supported or some sort of analysis. It's the only the mother who does this job. So there's no question of asking such a question. But that's what it is that we should first know that it's the feminine quality of a woman as a mother is very wrong. But we should encourage it and try to develop it so that spiritually you can communicate spiritually 
uh, you can invite his qualities for your own children. The mothers who do not have a dad can never develop good children with proper uh, emotions, with proper value system of morality. So it is very important for every mother to be very proud that they are mothers and for girls who are going to be mothers to be very proud that they are going to be mothers and that they represent the shakti. So now the, what is the part of the men is to take full advantage of that power by understanding, by complimenting, by looking after that. I'm not talking only about your wives, I'm talking about your sisters, your daughters, your mothers, and the whole society where women are to be respected and they have to be respected. And women should try to be respectable to try to know that they are the powers and they are the ones who will be used by this divine power as chance more than men. But if they are useless, then of course they wouldn't bother about them. They would like to bother them about men much more than what you are. So it is important to understand what is your role in such a world. This is your role in such a world. And I am sure you can work it out. We can manage this part. We can uh, equip yourself for this room, which is so beautiful and so. So much can be said about Mahalakshmi, and uh, there's no entry, but I think uh, later on we should keep this program on every year. You all should talk to Mahalakshmi Temple here yeah, to the uh, in the Kolhapur, and then I'll uh, tell you all about the mother's qualities, what she is as Mahalakshmi. And today we have the Mahalakshmi. Uh, uh, what? Sri is about Mahalakshmi's qualities. Okay, I mean we have Ganesha's, okay, and then we have this. So, seriously you must understand what is it. So, why? Okay, we are going to be studying this kind of thing. I wish I had some time to go to the house. I wish I had some time to go to the house. I wish I had some time to go to the house. I wish I had some time to go to the house. I wish I had some time to go to the house.